Hi, this is Jake with Lifeline Pet Supplies. Today we're covering the Lifeline Pet Supplies Puppy, Kitten, and Pet Incubator ICU. We are covering calibrating the temperature from where the sensor is placed to the uh, floor where your puppies or kittens are going to be. So I am today using one of the Accurite um, temperature and humidity sensors. Uh, we find these to be extremely accurate. Um, it is why we calibrate the units so we'll show calibration. Uh, for our customers uh, with the Accurite. You can purchase those separately. Um, you can also, you know, purchase one. I believe they sell these on Amazon. Uh, but of course, if you purchase it at the time of purchase with us, it's going to it's gonna ship free from us as well. Um, they don't always have them in stock on Amazon, and we generally keep these in stock. So what I'm showing you is how to calibrate the unit um, basically from the place where we take the sensor to the floor of the model, like I said, where the puppies or kittens are laying. And I know maybe many of you are thinking, why do we put the sensor up so high? Why don't we just put it down where the puppies or kittens are at? And we've, we've seen other um, makers of incubators out there doing this. Our only problem is when puppies and kittens are small, um, anything that rubs up against their face, they tend to want to try to swallow. So it's a potential choking hazard uh, for those models that have, you know, the sensor just kind of hanging. Um, in the air, so we feel it's best to keep it up and out of place um, at the back of the unit where the animal really can't get to it um, when they're small and they're being an incubator. So um, today what we're doing is we're going to go over the controller and settings and where to set all this so that you can get the unit calibrated properly. Now, it's always my suggestion to let the unit come up to temperature um, and then in between calibration changes, we, we recommend at least 30 minutes. Um, I like to go an hour. I set a timer for an hour. I go do something. I come back and I check it again so that we can really dial that in. Um, generally, the gauges in these the sensors really aren't off far. Um, the distance between the sensor and the back side of the heater and then the heater and the floor are almost identical um, if you measure those out. So... Um, Anyway, let's get started. So the first thing you're going to want to do is push in your set button and your temperature. If it comes factory set at 89 from us, um, go ahead and set that to take that up to 95. And you just simply do that by pushing in the um, pushing in the set button and then holding it. So you're going to press and hold this top left button here. So, I'm sorry, you're actually just going to press and release the top button there, that set button. And then if you were at 89, you're just going to raise that temperature up. So if you start it out here, you're going to see that when it comes on, it'll be flashing. Use that up arrow and you can hold it in to go faster. And once you get to 95 degrees, push your set button again to confirm. So that is going to set the unit for 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, the reason we do the calibration there is because it usually keeps the heater running and we can make our adjustments according to when the heater is running. Um, that is the best point of calibration. So the next step is going to be let that sit for at least a half hour. I would recommend setting the timer for an hour. Um, set your timer or your, your Amazon dot or whatever you're using. Tell Alexa to set the um, timer for an hour and then go ahead and um, come back and check that again. So um, basically what we're doing now is mimicking that um, at this point. So I have done let this unit set and have calibrated it. So what you would do for the calibration then is come back and you're going to see, okay, my temperature is 95, but my gauge is reading, um, let's say my gauge is reading uh, 93 um, degrees. So what you would do is you would come in and you would hold in now the set button until you see the HD come up. Then use your up arrow to get to toggle through to get to the CA. So that's calibration. Push set again, push and release set again to get to the calibration. And then because mine was one degree off, so basically if I set that right there right now, you can see it's reading 96. I want it to read 95. So again, I push in set and hold up the calibration. I push set again, and I'm going to take this down to minus 1.0. It's a 1 degree Fahrenheit. So now what I've done, in essence, is I told this controller to go ahead and um, the display to read minus 1, or 1 degree less than what it, the calibration at 0 is set for. So I took that temperature from saying it was at 
um, 96 to saying it was at 95. So I now my sensor, my temperature sensor matches the Accurite sensor. And the placement of that Accurite sensor, I just like to place it right at the back. I just lean it. It's easy to see it. Um, that's a good spot that, you know, it's is away from the animals, not directly underneath that heat. It is slightly just a little bit warmer right there in the center, um, which kind of mimics, you know, the animal coming to mom. So if they get a little warm, just a little bit in that center, and it's not off much, but just a little bit warmer in that spot so that uh, puppies or kittens have a little bit of warmer spot to come, and they're always going to want that. In a nest-style environment, they generally huddle together for warmth, um, and then they will move um, you know, out if they get a little bit warm or if mom's in there with them, they're going to snuggle up against her. So it kind of mimics, um, what we're looking for there. Um, so right now you can see, um, we've made that change and the unit is, um, is in heating mode right now and it's going to come up and reach that 95, um, degrees. And you can see our Accurite temperature, um, sensor and humidity reading, um, at the back is reading right now 95%, or I'm sorry, 95 degrees Fahrenheit on the temperature readout. And now we're at 95 up top. So the temperature controller is very, very fast reacting. Um, it's just basically in, in real time. And any temperature sensor that you buy here, um, like this Accu right here, you can see there at the back, at the bottom there, it's reading 95 they're not as fast reacting and you'll never find one that is. Um, unfortunately, that's one of the bad things about um, temperature sensors, but they are accurate. Um, so while the temperature sensor picks up just minuscule changes, you know, in temperature and humidity, um, we can dial that in and know that our environment is accurate at the floor. And that's what your puppies and kittens are feeling. So we just kind of dial that in. Once I get it within a degree, um, puppies and kittens don't, don't notice anything less than a degree, much like we would in the home. Um, you know, then I leave it. Um, but I primarily try to watch it and go over a, a period of about three or four different times of setting this and really dialing it in. So, um, right now we're there. Um, that concludes the, uh, calibration settings. Um, I'm not going to go over humidity day because it's basically the same thing, um, that you do with the, the humidity. I do not have the humidity hooked up in this unit. And when you're doing a calibration, I recommend keeping those right side um, ports plugged um, and not using oxygen or humidity when you go to calibrate this thing because we want to calibrate each individual section. So when you calibrate temperature, we're calibrating only temperature. When we're doing humidity, we're trying to do basically just humidity. Um, so I like to do those one at a time. It makes more sense and helps the unit um, stay regulated where it should be. So you can dial these in really you know, precisely. Um, Especially for the price of this unit on the market, it, it runs up there with some of the, the top incubators out there in, in forms of uh, temperature and calibration. And of course, it uses the same heating technology um, as the more expensive models that we sell on our website. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to visit our site at lifelinepetsupplies.com. You may also email technical support at lifelinepetsupplies.com for any technical questions. Thank you for choosing Lifeline Pet Supplies. Uh, we appreciate your business. Thanks for watching this video. If you liked it, subscribe. Follow us on Facebook um, and Instagram. Thanks. Have a great day.